I came in January 1961 in the middle of a snowstorm. I came from Havana, Cuba. We landed at Kennedy Airport and when I looked at the window and I saw that everything was white. I turned to my sister who was with me and said, oh my God, what kind of a country have we come to that is all white? And that was the beginning of my adjustment to the American life. I began to see that um, mental health agencies in the city of New York uh, uh, and healthcare agencies did not have sufficient bilingual bicultural staff. And I thought that language is such an essential part of one's own life that um, particularly become even more relevant when one is ill. And our first uh, program was um, trying to find uh, nurses who spoke the language, knew the culture, and we mounted the program to um, teach them English as a second language for nurses and help them to pass the licensure ex exam to become registered nurses in, in this country. Community Life is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to providing housing, meals, mental health, social services to individuals or New Yorkers who are living with mental illness and HIV AIDS. And my heart goes out to them because as I see them in the subway or on the streets, I know that they're not taking their medication, that they're not going to a clinic, that they're not eating. I was very doing, in the streets, doing hard drugs. And um, in not- In New York? In New York City, okay. yeah. Uh, not protecting myself, uh, having unprotected sex, and uh, actually uh, having, my habit was uh, crack cocaine. So um, did a couple of things, uh, tried to get rehabilitated, but couldn't get it. Getting pregnant uh, required going to the hospital and getting checked out and whatnot. And that was my first time where I um, got tested for HIV. Had the baby, found out uh, three months later my baby got sick. and. I was diagnosed with HIV. My daughter was di diagnosed with HIV too. We were diagnosed with AIDS. I received a phone call from the deputy director of the program, Scattersite Housing, which was uh, higher at that time. And she tells me, you know, I came across your application. I need you to come right now. I have an apartment for you. I w I'm interested in meeting you. I, but I'm not interested in your program because, you know, you have uh, people that come to your house and they're in my life and I, I got to tell the story over and over and this is not what's up. And she said, just come, give me the opportunity to speak to you. They understood my situation, that they were at my level, not, they were not looking down on me. They were looking at me as a human being that needed the help and that they gave them the benefit of the doubt to be here today. In today's world, many people have to live with diabetes. Many people have to live with cancer. But those individuals uh, can do it with much more support than those who are living with HIV AIDS and mental illness. Because in general, society tends to stigmatize the, these illnesses that our patients uh, have. And ironically, these two illnesses can be part of the life of any New Yorker, regardless of economic status, regardless of ability to live a full life, Anyone who 
he really, surely hears my life story. They, they said, you should be beyond crazy. I mean, I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I've been beat up. I've lived in the streets. And I've been a woman of terrible abuse from the age of four. Sexual, physical, emotional, I, I've had it from my mother, my father, my stepfather, my uncles. I've been, I was abused terrible. I'm diagnosed with bipolar disorder, depression. I was put into a mental hospital, state hospital at that. My case manager, she said, you are you ready to go and live by yourself. Mr. Nelson did all the paperwork for hire. Hire did their, hire gave me the one month rent, one month security. I moved in in four days. These places really work. But you have to do the work, too. Yeah. And what I've learned, it's not a handout. It's not a, it's really, they really help you get your life back and more. But God knows I did not know that it would ever, my life would ever be like this. Because well, when I went into the state hospital, I thought it was over. Mm. But God, I mean, what I do now is I work on, I work at Elmhurst Hospital. And this agency, all the agencies that I've been in, I don't know how they do it. I don't know where they come from, but they've helped Rose Hunter. And my work at the hospital, I give it more than 100%. We have been able to um, provide the basic things in life for a human being to live a, a decent life. I fly high now. When any, whenever anything comes my way, I conquer it. I'm a warrior. This is my war. This is me. This is the stuff that comes toward me. And I say, oh no, no more. I work with it. I, that's what I teach my patients at Elmhurst. I, I, I work w with the mental health. Because when I, yeah, cause when I came out of the hospital, I said I gotta give something back. Now I, I work, I, I'm involved in many things, and I am very outspoken um, with permission of my family and my daughters. Um, they, uh, they work in the community too. My baby, she's uh, gonna be 15 years old. She knows her status and she um, is a peer educator and she, it's a mentor to other, other kids that are affected or infected with this disease. The community, you know, needs to know that these services are here, that they can be utilized, and that you don't have to be afraid. So the notion of living in community is to really bring together um, families, uh, neighbors, other important institutions of the community. And there are many ways that New Yorkers and the business com community um, can be of help to this institution by providing us with resources, but also with their knowledge and with their skills, um, such as technology, such as uh, uh, how to increase uh, our effectiveness in the work. So um, it is a way for, for them to feel part and to be part of the community that these human beings live in.